mean, it is. It is. Is it in there? What's up, guys? I just clicked on, just so you know. <laughs> All right, so let's wait for some people to join here. All right. And then let me get my chat up on here. Sorry, guys. It's not, like, really the best, you know, angle and stuff, but we cozy. It's fine. But I feel like... Is it all right? I think so. I think so. Okay. We'll know you... in a minute. Yeah. Maybe a tiny bit closer. A tiny bit closer, I'm thinking. Oh, oh, oh. It says Tori is a baddie. Okay. Here. That. Okay, I used to show it so many times in my video that Pete in Ireland has a, a thing um, where if I show the SP to Claire, they get to take a shot. Really? <laughs> I don't know. Guys, you think this is good? Hey, <laughs> guys, we switched it up. It was too raining. Okay, we gonna... I think you have to tell them somehow. How do they know you're on? Well, There's there already people watching, yeah. Huh? There's already people watching. They already know I'm on. Okay, that's good. I, I'm gonna stop messing with it, guys. This is what we got. Um, let me pull up the chat and then. Oh. I just gotta wait for some people to join. I can bring my candle over here. <laughs> she, she loves her candle. <laughs> I just got it for Christmas. Hey, I know. I like it. I can like it. I like it. Oh. Okay. I don't want to hear myself. Weird house. Okay. All right. Tell the people who you are. My name's Tori For Christman, anybody that doesn't know. And I was in Scientology for 30 years, which I know you guys are adamantly think anybody that was in Scientology is insane. And I would agree with you at this point. But um, I got in it, I think I was 22 in 1969. And it was fun back then. I know people can't even imagine it being fun, but it was. It was a party. I mean, it was a giant, people were screwing everybody, and it was like, it was just a good time. It was just, people were having, you know, it was just a lot of fun. It wasn't all the seriousness that they have now. It's it's really a shame. For so me, it was better then than oh, it was now? Oh, way better. You yeah. know, it was way better. You know, like right, the thing well, I told you, you that I won't say here, but, yeah, 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 yeah. but, you know, we came in with cash, and they were like, the girls are here. You know, yeah. they, all they cared about was money. So when do you think it changed to become? Miscavige. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying Hubbard was great because he wrote the policies Miscavige is running, mm -hmm. but he was worse. Because, you know, I for any, any of the audience that don't know, I have epilepsy. I haven't had a seizure in 30 years, but when I was in Scientology, they made me get off my medicine. And because of that, it, it hurt my short-term memory, which you'll probably see through this talk. Because <laughs> nah, I forget be things that I, I can't, you know, it's just weird. I just noticed the purple hair. She's got oh, purple hair over there. There you go. Sick. There you go. Matches the shirt. There you go. Um, Do some more. Okay, so I'm going to read the comments off this phone. Oh my God. People you're... are like just starting to enjoy now, so I kind of got to give it like a minute. Okay. But anyway, l let's see that thing. I, I this feel is, like people this are going to be my... interested in this. When I left, you know, when you're in, you know, people do, they do declare people suppressive, but you know, they keep it really low key. So a lot of the bad things they do, people that are in, and that's one thing. Let me just make this clear. First of all, there's two sides to Scientology. There's the Sea Org, which you guys have heard a lot about because Leah did all those interviews with the kids and stuff like that. But there's also public, which are just people that came. They, they, do, they buy auditing. They buy training. It's still a giant ripoff. So it's, you know, I still am happy you guys are doing everything you're doing because it's wonderful. But at the time... Um, when you're in, you don't know all the negative stuff. No, I forgot where it was. The SP declared. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, yeah, you don't necessarily know they declare people suppressive, or if you do, it's like it's not really real. Anyway, as soon as I left, they declared me suppressive. And, and she has a literal, like, it's I, a literal I thing. I got it laminated. I, I wanted to get it, because when I left, Jesse Prince, who used to help run the church, was out. And he said, yeah, nobody has their SP declares anymore. They don't give them away. So I knew that was the thing. So now I come home to my house, this house, and everything is stripped. Everything's gone. And I want my receipts to get my money because they have my money. So I call Flag in Clearwater, Florida. I'm in Burbank, California. 
and I say, I want to talk to Treasury. And they say, who is this? And I say, it's Tori Bizazian was my married name. And they send me to the Continental Justice Chief. And she goes, she's like a 18, 19 year old kid. And she goes, do you want to know why you're talking to the Continental Justice Chief? And I said, no, why is that? You know, which I knew, but I wanted to hear her say it. And she goes, you've been declared suppressive. Now in Scientology, they have all kinds of levels that they're supposed to do before you declare someone suppressive. It's certain thing, actions that they're supposed to take. And they had done none of them. And so I said, you know, you might be too young to know this, but L. Ron Hubbard wrote this policy. If it isn't in writing, it isn't true. And I have nothing in writing. So she said, I'll have it to you within 24 hours. So when I got it, I laminated it and I've used it in all kinds of speeches. And I talked to a bunch of ministers once and showed it to them. And they were on Scientology's side until they saw this SP declare. That's insane. And they went, come on. They don't, they don't put it in writing, do they? And they, I said, oh yeah, I got one right here. And laminated. And then I passed it around to Wait, all Wait, so of what's them. the one line say on the back that you were telling me? Yeah, on the back it says, her only terminal is the Continental Justice Chief via the, uh, the International Justice Chief. Which means I can't talk, no one can talk to me. No one, not any Scientologist. Guys, is that not insane? Yeah. Uh, hold on, okay. Guys, is the service okay before I continue? Is like the service okay and everything? Um, someone said, let me just make sure the service is fine. Can you hear us? Okay, everyone's saying it's perfect. Okay, perfect. Uh, did she do any OT levels? You were OT7, you said? Scientology is like a triangle. So you start out in the beginning and I did work my way all the way up to OT7 OT8 is the highest, which my husband was. And most OT8s I know were really screwed up. I mean, and OT7s were too. You know, we were a mess. And what was, how much did it cost like to get to like OT8 approximately? It's probably different for everyone, but around. I'd say overall, they have about a million bucks they owe me. Jesus Christ. It's expensive. It's very expensive. And it's, you know, people think, well, why would someone keep doing that? But ac academics flew in to interview me when I escaped out. And they said, we've never met anybody who has gotten out of a cult and is as happy as you are. <laughs> and I said, but you have to know, I spent 10 years reading like self-improvement books and philosophy and just all kinds of stuff just to, because I figured there must be something else. And people like you guys were all out picketing way back then in, two, in the 90s and 2000s. And I, I kept thinking, they'd send me out to handle you guys. Yeah. And, and I'd just say, what are you guys doing? And anyway, I'd just talk to them and they'd leave. And I'd go back in and Osa would say, what did you do? What happened? And I'd say, they're just people. I talked to them. That's all. They're just people with a different view. Yeah. But they, they are always like, what are your crimes? What are your overts? You know, they always have all these weird, you know, like, let's go beat up Chris. You know, just... It's just stupid stuff that it's like, what kind of knucklehead would so, do that? So that's, that's a good question. Do you personally, because I personally do think this, and I think everybody is kind of on the same page that's like in our group. Of course. Do you think that uh, the person that attacked Chris was because of Scientology? A hundred percent. Thank you. All right. And, so, and, and I will here. say this, because when I was in, I didn't know they did this kind of shit. I really didn't. And when I got out, I was picketing and protesting with a guy named Tommy Gorman, who's a wrestler. And I said, Tommy, honestly, who would do that kind of stuff? And he goes, me, I fucking hate them. They used to call me up all the time when I was in and I'm a wrestler. He said, so they'd say, go beat up so-and-so and I'd do it. You know, and yeah. this, is, this is from the horse's mouth. He told me that. Yeah. And I was like, you're kidding. I mean, I just, it was so shocking to me to hear that they actually called people up and said, go beat somebody up. But he, for him, it was like something he dug doing, yeah. you know, so. He wasn't thinking about the person. Do you know what I mean? He was just like a wrestler and it's like, okay, I'll go beat him up. And that is insane. They ended up ruining his wrestling arm so he can no longer wrestle. Jesus. Yeah. While well, it was picketing, they came out, you know, they slammed me in the chest and then ran inside in the testing center. And then the, I think the next day they got to Tommy where they hurt his, his arm. So he moved, he's out of California. It was like, That's I'm gone. Um, okay, wait, wait, let me read some of the comments here. Uh, okay, so 
pretty much what was the goals of these teachings for a million dollars? Like, like what did you think you were getting out of you continuing to pay them to like up your... Well, oh, first of all, it's like anything. It, have you ever seen movies where they, the guy's selling gold watches and, you know, they start out really cheap and you buy another one. And, but up here, are the re these are really, really valuable. And it's the same kind of thing where you have to realize you're surrounded by people. Most people that stay in Scientology, this is my own opinion. All of this is my opinion and experiences. But most people stay in because they honestly like the people. And most of the people are pretty nice people. Not this, I'm not talking about the Sea Org, and even some of the Sea Org yeah. were pretty good. But, um, but now it's so weird that, from what it was. But people would stay for that reason, and you're surrounded, they find out your buttons, which every single person listening has certain buttons. We all do. And, and it's usually like communication, relationships, jobs you know it's just stuff that people generally have problems with mm -hmm. and they find out well what is your thing and you're like well i really have a hard time communicating and they're like well i think scientology might be able to help you with that shocking right so they get you in that's why they always want to get you inside that's why at the testing center that's a, their whole thing get them in because once they're in like i've stood outside there and said there's nothing free in scientology nothing i was in it 30 years there's nothing free right and then a, a, a some high school girl will go in and come out and she'll have a Dianetics book. And I go, didn't I tell you there's nothing free in Scientology? Look at you. And she'd go back in and get her money back. So it's worth it. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's really worth it. It's really valuable. But, it's, but what did I get out of it? It's tricky because they have all the, they find out your buttons and they find out all the people that, you know, you, you just make friends and you like them. And they're all, they're moving up the bridge and going, you got to do this next level. It's so great. And you have to remember it's mind control. So they're, they're believing it too. If you haven't seen The Truman Show, watch it because that really is Scientology. You're insulated in this group and they slowly cut off all your freedoms. So you can't really talk to other people. You can't, they can't watch this video. Yeah, so you don't know like they can't another read. way of life by then. It's yeah. like, uh, what was your thoughts when first learning about the Xenu story? The first thoughts I had are, you got to be fucking kidding me. That was my first thought. And, and for me, see, now they have a whole big horse room and everything because they realized many people had that thought. And there aren't some of the volcanoes that are in that whole story aren't even a, around. So now they kind of walk people through all the questions and stuff. But at my, when I got in in 79, I mean, when I did the OT3, literally they put me in like a closet. It was like a closet with a light and I opened up this, they handed me a pack and I opened it up and it said 75 million years ago, there was this That's evil a world. Well, first of all, L. Ron Harbour gives this whole big blah, blah, blah. I nearly died on this level and I nearly died with epilepsy. So I thought, well, that's kind of like this. And then it goes into this like 75 million years ago, the evil warlord Xenu. And I thought, oh, come on, this can't be it. And I, and I was really pissed. And then the supervisor came in and I said, come on. And she said, don't you have epilepsy? And I said, I do. And she, and then, you know, I realized doctors don't know to this day what really causes seizures. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe this is it. So for me, it was sort of, a, I, I didn't care about Xenu, but it was sort of like, if I am covered with these body thetans, which are spirits, and they're creating these seizures. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. If I get rid of them, I'll be better. I won't have I won't have epilepsy. That was my whole. That was me on OT three. So every time I'd get rid of one and my needle would float, I think I'm closer to it. Yeah. And I finally went. I'm done. And they I attested, and I went home and I tried to get off my medicine. And I went into what's called status epileptus, which is multiple grand mal seizures. Mm -hmm. And I and I I knew it was heavy. And I, so I called. I knew Scientology would do what they did to Lisa McPherson, which is drive me a million miles to a Scientology doctor. Mm -hmm. So I called this guy, Jerry Hall, who was kind of on the fence anyway. And I just, all I did was say, and it's sort of like Chris. I mean, how did Chris know to call 911. You know what I mean? It was just like I was that bad off. But I said, get over here. And he came right over and he took me right to Morton Plant Hospital, which is next to Flag. And the doctor said, five more minutes and you would have been dead. 
Damn. Heavy. So, you know, it's a, a, so there went OT3, you know, and you think, well, why didn't you leave then? Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's the, well, you know, they've always got the registrars who are there going, you know what, this happened to me too. And if you just do OT4, yeah. that'll probably be it. So it's, it's like a fishing rod with the fish, you know, just a little bit. It's just a little more and then you'll get it. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Am I answering things for people? Or yes, not? yes. Yeah. Word. Is it helping? Yes. <laughs> really? Yeah, people love it in here. They're all saying they love you. Oh. Uh, where, Kate's, or Kat, I'm not sure how you say, uh, where do you think Shelly is? In her office somewhere? No. No? I think, I, it's like, first of all, you have to remember mind control. Just like me, I was in it, you're in it, and they're like, Tori, you're the only one that could open up these phony accounts. No one else. We don't trust anybody else. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure they're running the same with Shelly. I think she's up in, you know, Lake Arrowhead or so, somewhere, you know, guarding the titanium discs, right? And it's like, they just probably keep running shit on her every week. You know, thank God you're here. You know, they, okay. look at these videos of this guy that, you know, was handcuffed, right? And it's like, we, we're, because you're here protecting these, you know, it's just sort of like they run their shit all the time and people buy it. That's insane. <laughs> uh, okay. Is there anything that you still, that you think is like good from Scientology? Like anything you actually believe in still that you learn there? The only thing that I got out of it that I still think is really great is um, the communication course, which is the first course. And, and it, the only reason it's great, my parents were like sort of, my mom was a natural PR and my dad was on TV as a broadcaster because he's in the Football Hall of Fame and he, then he went into broadcasting in the 60s. He played for the Chicago Cardinals. I got to give a pitch for my dad. There you go. But um, anyway, they, they were very big on communication. So I sort of was already pretty good at it, but I liked that it had little steps. And I know that you can go on there and see the TRs and they look awful, but I think if you did them in, in, in a gentler way, you know, like I know a lot of people, I've been in business meetings where people, the business owner will say, blah, 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 we're going to do this. And not one person acknowledges them ever. Whereas that's one of the TRs, you know, TR2 is, thank you, I heard that. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes a big difference when just in a communication between each other. So they're just like little steps that aren't that big. If you do the, if you do the original one, the, the way it is now, no. No. And the rest of it, no. Not really. I mean, the grades, which are the lower part of the bridge, if you think of a triangle, the lower part are like what they call grades. And those I think people can have gains on because it's just like talk therapy. Mm -hmm. It's like you and I could sit and talk for an hour and feel better. Do you see what I mean? If, we li if I listen to you or you listen to me. It's just, you know, it's, that's all it is. It's just like sort of little stuff. Yeah. It, where it went off the rails for me was clear because there really aren't any clears, and then OT, yeah, which was just total bullshit. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. Do you regret? Uh, do you regret being a part of Scientology, or do you think it was a good lesson in life? I mean, I think she regrets it. I think that's pretty obvious. Well, you know, it's really <laughs> tricky because I do have a son that is out, and I see him all the time, and I love him. And if I hadn't gotten in Scientology, I wouldn't have married my husband and we wouldn't have had my son. All so, right, well, that, that's fair. That, that's that's fair. the main thing, because I lost all my Scientology friends, which Andreas pointed out if they were friends, you know, what kind of friends could those be if they won't talk to you because you change your mind? Yeah. And I thought that's a good question. That really helped crack my Truman Show. Uh, hold on, hold on. Take your time. It's all right. <laughs> okay a lot of people want to know about what experience you what experiences you had with the fair game tactics that's a big question I've had keep asking. unbelievable I mean again I did not believe they did fair game I stood up in court with Margaret Singer who's a um an author and you know very well known at the time and she was saying there is fair game and I stood up in court just said your honor I have to say something there isn't fair game anymore. You know, there's a cancellation of it, and that's a fact. 
and there is a cancellation of it, but they showed me once I got out at the bottom in fine print, it says this cancellation does not apply to SPs. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So Scientologists all the time will tell you it's canceled. There's no fair game. But anyway, what kind of fair game things have they done? Um, they canceled my van when I went to leave. When I got to the airport, finally, the, the airplane was canceled. Um, the vice president came and, you know, pounded me and said, we know where you're going. You're not going there. And they chased me across the country. The Tampa police got me out of the Tampa airport. Since I've been back home, um, they've flattened my tires. They One time I came out of, I started getting my community involved in it because I knew I was, you know, it was sort of like me against them. You know, it was like 2000, 2000, the year 2000. So there were critics, but they weren't speaking out with their names. Mm -hmm. They had my name and address and everything else. They put my name up on a porn site, you know, and. You know, these porn guys started calling, and I said, look, you know, I escaped out of a church. It's not really a church, Scientology, because it's not a church. Um, but anyway, I escaped out, and they're just using you, and I'm sorry, because it was like for a good time called Tori, and they had all for these things For a good time listed. called Tori. <laughs> <laughs> they had all oh these things God. listed out, some things I'd never even heard of. But anyway, they had all these things that I would do, supposedly. But the good thing was this guy named Truth Seeker, they, they hired a couple of people right away to lie about me and post lies on the internet. And if you, anybody knows how to use the Wayback Machine, you can see, go back and see, I was Miss Magoo 55. And you can see there on alt religion Scientology, there are just thousands and thousands and thousands of lies about me. I mean, every day, 365 days a year, you know, 24 seven, they were lying about me. And there was nothing I could do. I mean, this lady, Diane Richardson, who was supposedly a librarian, nobody knew her. She lied about me all day, you know, saying how evil I was and don't talk to Tori and this and that. And a bunch of people in the beginning were all like, don't talk to her. She's really an awesome plant and all this stuff. Oh, God. Now I found out two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I went to the complex because my friend and I always just swing by there and see what's going on. And this guy came walking down the street. Did I tell you this? Mm -mm. He came walking down the street. It was it was it was more than a few weeks because it was right around Christmas time. So it was at the you know right at the end of December, and they had all their big lights up down L. Ron Hubbard Way. And I said to this guy, "Hey man, what's happening?" There was only one guy on the street, and I called him over, and he said, "I don't know, but they have nice lights, don't they?" And I thought, "Okay, he's a Scientologist." <laughs> <laughs> and and I said, "Are you a Scientologist?" And he goes, "No, I'm an ex Jehovah's Witness." but my friend is in there. I said, what are you doing here? And he goes, my friend is in there doing the personality test. Oh, so anyway, I had him come out. They wanted him, this is a brand new person, 5,000 bucks they wanted him to give. <laughs> and so I told him a bit about it and said, don't. So they, the security came, they came, took him inside, they locked the doors. I said to his friend, look, get him back out here. So he came back out and, and I, before he went in, I said, look, they really hate, they really hate me. So mm -hmm. they're going to tell you lies about me. So he goes inside, they lock the door, he comes back out, and he goes, wow, they really hate you. <laughs> and I said, I told you. So the next day I called him to see, and I said, what did they say? And he said, you're basically an undercover CIA agent. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I've been Imagine. upgraded from SP to CIA agent. <laughs> well, there you go. That's quite the upgrade, honestly. I know. Um... But they'll lie about anything. They'll lie about all kinds of things. So they've done tons of lies. But let me just finish the one thing on yeah, yeah. the fair game thing. So I got my community involved and I took, I went over to Pet Boys and I said, look, you know, I was in this church, blah, blah, blah. They do fair game. If they do, I can't tell if it's a gang or, the, or Scientology. And he goes, well, bring it over. So I get out of work one day and half of my rear view mirror is sprayed pink. And I start driving and it falls off. And I think, okay, this is them. But I wasn't sure. I thought maybe it's a gang. So I go over to Pet Boys, get the guy, and I say, look, I really don't know if it's a gang or the church. He goes, all right, let me look. He opens the door, and I swear to God, in under a second, you know, he just opened the door, and he shuts the door, and he goes, it's Church of Scientology. I said, how do you know? He goes, because you have a really good radio in your car, and a gang would take a radio. Yeah. Plus, you've got stuff in the back seat, and they didn't take any of that. So it's Scientology. 
you know, so that really helped me getting other people educated about it and involved in it and watching after it for me. Yeah. Um, Landon had said, do you think it was a coincidence that the protesters' tires were flat or was it Scientology? She, you, I mean, she already said her tires were flattened by Scientology. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we no, know. No, I don't think it's it a coincidence. It wasn't a coincidence that no. everybody's tires were flat. Yeah, no. Um, Shell, uh, does Tori think there's they're behind Chris's attack? She already said yes, 100%. Uh, okay. I mean, I'm curious as to people that go, keep asking that question. We've said it over and over. So it's it's kind of like, at this point, I look at the people that keep asking that and go, all right, who is this person? Uh, I was watching someone this morning saying how, like someone who's been out there, saying how, oh no, they think it's just a robbery because there's a lot right. in LA. Right. I'm like, what, right. what robber like continues beating someone up, right. waits till they're by the, yeah, no. And they just happen to be on Fountain, which has nothing going on there. There's, you know, it's like there would be no reason to rob, there's no people there. You know, it's just Scientology. Yeah, 100%. No. Uh, okay. But I'm not saying that you are whoever the person was that asked that question because you could be a new person going, Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So we understand that too. Um, uh, sad, exactly. But I can't thank all of you enough who, you know, A, back up Jessica because that helps. Every, like I always say, every voice matters. It really does. I mean, people think, well, only you know, this person and that person count, but it's not true. It's really, it's, it's really a team effort and it really makes a big difference when you guys take the time to make a comment or, you know, just say something. It, mm -hmm. it does. Um, is your husband still in it? You're divorced, right? He is. Yeah. He stayed in it and he remarried and he won't talk to me for 23 years. Uh, and it's too bad. It really is. Did you see the stolen bike thing from yesterday? Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Do you think it was just a random or them I don't trying know. to make us look like criminals? Yeah, I don't know. It's very weird. Yeah, anything's possible. Yeah. Um, the comments are going fast. <laughs> do you think that, okay, so pretty much what do you think that the, they're asking, what do you think that the recruiters think about the people as we're like us standing outside talking against them? Do you just think that they think that we're like completely crazy? No, they don't think you're crazy. What I, I, my analogy, because they used to send me out yeah. like that. So I know that how they feel. And I used to call it plexiglass, where it's like you can say anything to them and it just bounces off. They don't really hear it. It doesn't. That's why I always say, number one, try to be nice because they're really used to kind of nastiness now, especially. Oh, yeah. so, so niceness, like for me, when I was being sent out to handle the critics, they were all yelling, oh, Ron Hubbard this and that and blah, 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 and the Sea Org and, you know, just all this shit, right? And I didn't hear any of it. And this one guy came up to me and he goes, I just got to ask you a question. And I said, okay, what's that? And he goes, if you're free, why can't you read certain books? And I, I said, I can read certain books. I just don't want to read those books. There were only three books out at the time, three. And so he goes away and he comes back and he goes, you know, can I just ask you a question again? And I said, yeah. And he goes, if you're free, why can't you read certain books? And he just kept asking me that question, but he honestly, you could tell he really wanted an answer. It wasn't just like, I'm trying, I'm putting this in your head so it'll screw you up. You know what I mean? Or you'll leave Scientology. He wasn't doing that. He really wanted an answer to that question. And that really went into my heart. And the other thing that really goes into your heart is music. If you can play music, because people can hear music when they can't hear words. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's really amazing. But I ended up going home and I had this thing in my bedroom with four Dalmatians, which are black and white dogs. And one of them had a pink collar on it. And underneath it, it said in pink, dare to be different. And I, I sat in bed and I thought, I'm about as different as a rock, you know, after talking to that guy. So it does make a difference. You never know. You never know when you can change somebody's life. You never know. I mean, it's kind of incredible. I mean, I had a mom, I think I told your mother this story, but I had a, a mother who, if you guys don't know Anonymous, well, anyway, I'm not gonna explain Anonymous. You have to Google it if you don't know him. But anyway, Anonymous took a, a section of Anonymous. Someone explained it to me. Anonymous is like a pie. And a section of Anonymous took on the Church of Scientology. 
Okay, so now we're out there and their big thing was protesting the Church of Scientology and educating people and also having fun. So they always had cake and music and all kinds of shit. So we're out there, you know, out in front of the complex, you know, there and the, you know, they had hundreds of kids were here. There were like 900 or 500 kids were here in LA, 9,000 around the world in every major city in the world for this one picket mm -hmm. that they set up. And so anyway, this mother calls me and she's crying. And I said, what's up? And she goes, I've been trying to get my daughter out of Scientology for years. And she tonight called me and she said, Mom, <clears throat> I'm watching these people. They're having so much fun. I want to leave. Just come pick me up. I'm done. Jeez. So that's like, I, you know, you never know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, that was pretty cool. What would they, so if they wanted to leave, like any of the recruiters, if they just decided like, oh, I want to leave now, what would they have to do? They don't have to do anything. In the, in the policy, they have to do all kinds of shit. But they can just walk out the door. And then, like, what would Scientology do to them? It just depends on the person. You know, like, if they, if they, if they know they're kind of done anyway, I, I think, at this point, they just let them go. I mean, someone like me, because I knew all this top secret shit, they, they came after me. That's why they chased me across the country. But I knew stuff that most Scientologists don't know. I was in, like, a top secret mafia that they tricked me into. My best friend tricked me into it. And I thought, okay, you know, he said, look, I need some help with this on the internet. And I said, okay, you know, I'll do it. What, you know, and I, and so I knew this whole thing and had watched it evolve and go downhill. And it was really bad news. And then when I woke up, I had been telling them, you're creating your own enemies by doing this kind of shit they do to you guys. You know, I said, when I was in, I was saying, you're, you're doing this. Yeah. And if you watch Magoo dancing in Boston, I say to David Miscavige, I warned you about this. You are creating your own enemies, and here I am. You know, so. Yeah. Um, so do you think that they would do more fair, fair game stuff to the people that left than the protesters? Like the people that, like the recruiters. It just depends on the person. Mm -hmm. It just depends on the person and how much they know. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Like if they, or and if they shut up, if they leave and shut up, no problem. But if they say anything, that's when the fair game starts. Gotcha. Uh, okay, so for the people that are just joining and asking what's going on, so, uh, she was in Scientology for 30 years, right? Right. She was in Scientology for 30 years. She escaped now. I escaped She's in, been 2000, out for, in 2000. In 2000. So I've been out 23 years. And I've been speaking out. And I wasn't going to either. I wasn't going to speak out. I called Stacy and I said, I'm not going to speak out. I'm not going to pick it. I'm not going to make videos. I'm only leaving under the radar. And she said, okay, we're just doing for you what we what wish somebody had done for us. Mm -hmm. But Scientology turned me into this. You can type well, my name it. in Wikipedia and go in Tori Christman, and it's a whole page of shit, right? And that's from Scientology. They kept it going because all the time I'd be like, okay, I'm done with this shit. And then they'd do some more shit, and I'd be like, all right, fire up the web page. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like even what Chris said. He's like, yeah, like now, you know, he's recovering or whatever. But he's like, they just made me more mad. Like, yeah, yeah. that's what happens. They, and the Wikipedia thing, this is kind of it. You watch, look for questions and I'll tell them the Wikipedia yeah. thing. This is kind of an interesting story. Every time something would happen from 2000 on, this guy from Wikipedia would call me and he would say, you know, all right, what's the backstory? And I would tell him what I knew. And he'd say, okay, thank you. And I started watching Wikipedia, and I realized Scientology was covertly editing and changing L. Ron Hubbard's Wikipedia site. And mine was getting way shrunken down, too. One of my friends put one up, and I didn't have that much, but it was way shrunken down. So I said to the guy, you know, they're covertly editing Wikipedia. And I said this to him almost every year. You know, whenever I talked to him, I'd say, you know, do you realize they're, they're still covertly editing this? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But finally, he said, look, okay, we decided we're going to have an investigation on this, about this covertly editing, and we want you on the board. And I said, no. And he said, why not? You've been telling me about it for years. And I said, because if I'm on the board and you decide what you will, that they are covertly editing, 
they will say the whole thing is bogus because I'm on the board and I'm a declared suppressive. So I said, you guys do the investigation and you guys figure it out. And they have a DVD where they ed educate, you know, it started with college and then it's high school and they told me now they're going into grade schools on how to use Wikipedia. And so I went to the showing of it and the guys that made it, the DVD, were there. And at the end, they had a Q&A and I said, and they had it in the middle, in the middle of the DVD, it says some people are covertly editing the Wikipedia and it has this big red X, the Church of Scientology, right? Right in the middle of it. So at the end, I raised my hand and I said, look, if you ever have any legal issues with this, I'm the one who opened those phony accounts. So I know I can speak up for you on it. You're right. I know. So, but what happened, that's how I have the big Wikipedia site. I said to him, look, mine is down to like a paragraph. And I've been doing interviews for years. And I said, you know, can you help me with this? And he goes, well, you have to have a lot of references. And I said, I do have references. Go look around the internet. Mm -hmm. And so that's that whole website he made up, he put together. And some of it's right, some of it's not right. But anyway, it's good enough. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you ever go to RPF? That's the other thing I wanted to explain. Remember I said that there's public and Sea Org? See, the Sea Org are the only guys that would go to RPF. I mean, I was in the Sea Org for six months, and then they routed me out because of my medicine. So I wasn't in it long enough. I don't even think they had the RPF when I was in it, which was like 71. But anyway, the public never are sent to the RPF. They, you know, we wouldn't go. It's like, yeah. forget it. We've got a job, so we got to work. Yeah. Um... Isn't that a cool story about Wikipedia, though? I love that. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> insane. <laughs> Nailed them. Uh, they want to know about your interaction with Angel back in 2015 because everybody saw that video. It, that was the weirdest thing. I, My friend Andrew, who actually turned me on to you, <clears throat> used to work at the Egyptian, which is right next to the testing center. The testing center is here and half a block down is the Egyptian Theater. <clears throat> and of course, Scientology, if you watch their videos, they give these people these tickets saying, here's a free video, or you can go see a free movie. So they would go down to the Egyptian, show up with Andrew saying, we want to come see the movie. And he'd say, this is not, this is Scientology, get out of here. Yeah, you know, and yeah, we yeah. became really good friends. And so anyway, he's become a really good critic of it. Now I forgot what the original question was. What was uh, it? Your um, interaction with Angel in 2015. Okay, right. So I'd go almost every weekend. Andrew would call me and say, if you want, come on down to the Egyptian. And, you know, it was great. I got to see a lot of movies, and they had a lot of celebrities that would come and do Q&A mm -hmm. afterwards. It was really great. So I'm, I would always take the subway here down just one stop to Highland, get off there, and then walk down to the Egyptian. So I'm walking down to the Egyptian. I go by Scientology. There's Angel out there, and he goes like this. I've got Tori Crispin here. And I didn't even know who he was. I'd never seen him. He goes, I've got Tori Crispin here. And I said, are you fucking kidding me? You don't even know me. How do you how do you have Tori Crispin here? And I re reach in the phone and I go, Gavino, go fuck yourself. You know, I'm on a public sidewalk. Sorry if I'm offending you guys with my no, language, no, but no. that's they Scientology. They hear me curse a thousand times in the okay. life. Yeah, okay. no, you're fine. I know. So anyway, that's how I met him. I, and, and that's how that all came about was me just kind of shocked that he would say I've got Tori Christman here and then I just started talking to him and back then they used to talk to us you know like now huh? things, have things have changed I know, I know. Uh, 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 white snake she said like a million Pardon me? I uh, know this person's username is White Snake. They said, "How much did she pay him for courses?" To yeah, life? about a million. Yeah, too um, much. Life in Sea Org. What? Uh, like, were they able to? Like, what music were they limited to? TV, like family, like what were they limited to? Well, remember, I was only in the Sea Org for six months. Yeah. So I was out on a ship in L, L, uh, Los Angeles Harbor. Some it was called the Boulevard. And we were on the ship, 
So I never really was in it long enough to know all that stuff. I mean, you can read about it on the internet because all the all those questions are answered by people that were in the Sea Org for a long, long time. But I, I didn't have that. You know, I mean, I think they can listen to music that they want when they're off post. Mm. They can't listen to music, I don't think, when they're on post. That was one of my big buttons was the kids. Yeah. See, because I grew up, you know, I got in in 69, and a lot of these people had babies, and they'd all be there, you know, right next to them, and they'd be there regging, and everyone was smoking. <laughs> so it was like this awful environment for children. And I kept saying to them, you've got to, you know, help the kids, you know, let the parents see the kids more, because they never see them. Mm -hmm. So then the, their solution was just cancel children altogether, you know, and now they enforce abortions. Yeah. Yeah, none of the, yeah, the Sea Org people can't have, I heard Kids. they, yeah, yeah. And I didn't know that, you know, and I, I found out about it, but it was, it was really freaky. I found out about it right when I was waking up. Um, what does it say? <laughs> I don't even. You can pick out comments if you want. Scientology You just gotta scroll LAPD. down because they get a little old quick. Scientology and LAPD relationship. Sci I, I think Scientology pays off the, the, the Hollywood PD. I don't know about all the PD. Hollywood. Um, she loves you. <laughs> I love Jess. Oh, God. There you go. <laughs> okay, the Chris attack was Scientology. Enough questioning. Look up R2-D2 to know what lengths they go to. Okay, that's sort look of a... Look up R2-D2. Yeah. <laughs> R245, they, they don't use R245, they don't. I mean, I, I don't agree with you on that at all. What's R45? R245 is the thing where you just pick up a gun and shoot someone, but it's not oh, anything, oh, my you know. God. It's like, people always quote that, and it's like, that isn't really the lengths they go to. I, I can't, I mean, I think they, they did kill a few people, but not. it's not like rampant. Anyway, I got to keep doing this. Like, yeah, you got to air. Yeah, you do it. Um... <laughs> Thank Sorry, you. Be my godmother. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm everyone's godmother. Okay, let's see. Do you know anything about the resolution of mind? No. A few. If they believe you live over and over. Uh, <laughs> oh, these are quick. Yeah. Why were other protests unsuccessful? That's the other thing I wanted to make clear is that other protests weren't unsuccessful. I mean, this has been going on, well, for me, since 2000. And there, it's like layers of things happen and change. You know, so this is the best as far as all the windows being shut down. I mean, that's amazing. I, if you go on my Facebook site, Tori Christman, we f took photographs of every single building, and they're all shut down completely, you know, all the blinds. They're inside, so you can see the lights are still on, but, but it still is a pretty good product. But um, I just think it's a long, it's a long term thing, you know. And I, I obviously I agree with streets. We've gotta, we've gotta get rid of their um, tax access. exemption. Someone just asked about that. What, yeah. Um, what are they doing on these ships? On the ships? Yeah. The like. You mean like the free winds? Like, don't they have like that ship or something? They that... have a free wind ship, which is where they do OT eight. And I don't know if they're still even using it, but if they are, it's only it's really only for OT8. Mm. Um, the other ships, Hubbard, came on land years ago. So, like, and I'm not going to waste time telling you about my, my time on the boulevard. It was too stupid. Was it, like, was it just, like, overall, like, bad experience? Like, was it, like, eh? The, somebody leaked out the oil during the night. Oh, okay. and, and the police came up and in a boat and said, you have to get rid of that by four o'clock or we're, you're, we're going to charge you something like $100,000. And we thought, oh, God, you know, we're all going to be killed. And then this guy, one of them that was in the Sea Org was a farmer. And he said, look, if we can get hay, we can row around and it'll soak up the oil and we can put it on the boat and then we'll be OK. And we did it. We all, you know, that's one thing the Sea Org is good at is they get they get shit done. You know, at least in the old days, they did. And I feel it was like they probably like, still do. Cause yeah, they probably still they're do. They're working hard out there. Yeah, they do. They get so, like, I love that one where you had her just sweeping. <laughs> oh, yeah. Twilla goes crazy with that broom. 
Uh, okay, they all want to know if you know crampatology. <laughs> crampatology? <laughs> what is that? It's what we nicknamed the one guy. I think his name is Tim. The guy that, uh, do you know who I'm talking about? He's the one that, during the Christmas party, he was standing by the door. Everyone named him Grandpatology. Is he's he the a one sewer? That, yes. I th he, but he stands outside the door. He's like high up OT level or something. Unless it's Tim, my, the Tim that I know that used to come out and handle us. He's a real th tall guy, big guy. No, no, no. T okay, that's one cramp ontology. He's the less nice one. Yeah, you're th the with the mustache. No. Oh, okay. I oh, she seen, doesn't know cramp ontology. I, I don't. I, I don't. Okay. Know. Um, are there a lot of Scientologists who are in it just to be in it for whatever reason? Okay, so do you pretty much start saying, do you think that any of the Scientologists that are in it, like recruiters or anything like that, do you think that they actually think it's BS or they? I don't think they think it's BS. I mean, I honestly think they think they're in, they're in the right show. You know, it's like, and, and when you, with people yell at them, when you go inside, they go, do you really want to be out there with people screaming their lungs out? And it's kind of like. They, you know, they, they use things against people. Like, they don't look very happy, do they? You know, and of course, they're super happy, you know, when they're saying that. But anyway. Uh, advice you would give for the protesters. What is it? Advice you would give to the protesters, just like Amy. Advice? Yeah. Keep doing whatever you're doing. I mean, I honestly think everything that you've done has been great. I do. The only thing that I would say is um, always be in a lit area. Always, always be in a lit area, and if you can, where there's cameras, and never go alone. Always be with someone. <laughs> I think we figured that out. <laughs> I think we so, figured that out. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. But it, but I, I've been saying it since I since I've been talking to you guys. I've been saying, I you know, always go in twos, and then the other thing is like like a lit area. Always go in twos, and I can't remember the third one. But there is another one that I have. I forget what it is. I wrote it on one of the comments. But, um, you know, be safe. Be, you know, watch out for yourself. Watch out for your, who's around you kind of thing. Because from that, and, and, and don't, you know, you can be goofy with someone. Like someone was putting down Chris, um, the Hellcat. And because he's goofy and I said, you know, a lot of people have left a lot of cults. If you watch my YouTube site, Tori Magoo 44, a lot of my videos start really goofy. I have like Mr. Anonymous and, you know, different animals. That's how and you stuff grab like people's that. attention. Nobody I know. wants to, nobody's like, there's a lot of people that watch this now. That's like people like eight year old little kids have come up to right. me and they're like, I love the, I love like the, this and that about Scientology. And I'm like, you think these eight year olds and like these kids and stuff, and, like, families would watch it together if, like, it wasn't, like, joking around. Like, right. little nicknames and stuff. It's like... I've had people leave the Jehovah's Witnesses and come up and tell me, we were laughing at you and making fun of you. And then we realized, wait a minute, we do the same thing. And they left. They said, we're free. We're out of it. You know, so for me, goofiness is a good thing. I mean, it's like, I get it. Don't be too goofy. And you got to pay attention. But I think Chris does. He's, he's a very sharp guy. I feel like Chris is the least goofy. I think maybe they were talking about confident Chris because he's the one that jokes more. I feel like Chris, Chris without a Hellcat is more like serious with his. Okay, well there was some lady that yeah, maybe yeah, she yeah. was talking about confident Chris. Uh, but... Eunice, uh, sorry if I said your name wrong. Thank you so much. And she said, "What do you think about the Mike Render and the Aftermath Foundation?" If you don't want to answer any of these, you don't have to. By the way, <laughs> I think I'm, let's move on. Yeah, okay. I mean it's it's like I they're, they're I believe. I don't know what's happened, you know, so I, I haven't s kept up with it, so I don't know what's happened. I truly don't know about yeah, it at all. I really don't. I so, can't say anything. You know, it's, I don't want to get into something that I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, why do you think the group of Anonymous stopped protesting? But the other thing I will say is I do know Mike, and, and I know a lot of people have kind of gotten, and there's some kind of big, he, maybe he screwed up, and if he did, he did. But, but because he's been sick and stuff I, I'm kind of like I don't know I feel like mm -hmm. yeah know, I, I don't take know. a break I don't know you know take it. a break and see you know let it yeah you know, I, I try to tell people Jesse taught me that he'd say I'd say Jesse these people are just driving me nuts they're lying about me and this and that and he'd say okay listen to me carefully step away from the stove and that's such a great tool you know just step away from the stove a little bit 
why have other ex-Scientologists like Chris Shelton come out so strongly against the Squirrel Squad? I don't even know who Chris Shelton is, to be honest. Well, there you go. Yeah. I know who he is, and I don't know. And I didn't know he, he didn't like us. Either, I didn't know okay. he was against you guys. Yeah. I haven't. Good to I, know. News to me. News to uh, us. <laughs> um, and Chris should just keep doing what he does, because the stuff that Chris does is good. And I think that's true for everybody. Do what you do that's good. We and, all have very different out styles. of the other shit, you know, because yeah. it's like the you have to know the three goals of OSA are number one, distract off of Scientology. So if you're over talking about golf, they're winning, right? And that's a fact. I watched this happen. Number two goal is divide and conquer. Get you guys fighting with each other. The more you're fighting, the less you're talking about Scientology, right? And they're winning. So you're literally giving them weekly stats. It's like, oh, good. They're not talking to each other now. That's perfect. That's our win. And the third goal was to just slime the area with a bunch of nothing. And I said, why would anybody want to do that? And he said, they wouldn't. So that's why it works, because people don't even want to go there. And then it's just done. And that's happened with some websites. The ski boo said that's the guy who tried to team up the streets and tree sold them the F off. I know who you're talking about now. Okay, I know who you're talking about now. The ski boots? Uh, no, that's their username. Oh. They were saying, I, about the Chris whatever guy, um, whoever, the last comment was about the, we said we all know who it is. Now I remember who it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, was your family happy when you got out? What was their reaction seeing you again after 30 years? Well, my dad died when I was 22. So I went and talked at CFI, Center for Inquiry, which is on my Tori Magoo 44, the whole talk. But in the middle of it, I mentioned that about my dad. And I said it was right after I joined Scientology. And they all burst out laughing. They're skeptics. And they said, maybe that's why he died, because you joined Scientology. But it wasn't. That wasn't why he died. But anyway, he died. And my mom ended up marrying a really creepy guy. And that's way too long a story. But she finally, he died. And she and I got back together because I got out of Scientology. So then we finally got back together and and uh, we agreed on some stuff. But it, w it was, as my aunt said, really, for most of your life, Tori, you really didn't have a mom because my mom was with this guy and weird. And I was in the church and weird in that end, you know, so. Uh... But I had a great childhood. So I always say I have like the greatest base child that you can ever have. And I have a sign in my house that says you're never it's never too late to have a happy childhood. <laughs> um, I'm trying to look at the super chats for questions, guys. Oh. Uh, they go they go fast. Um some of these questions I already am I think you some of you guys missed like answers I don't wanna I'm not gonna ever repeat it. What do you think about Scientology and Nation of Islam? Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good one. I happened to be watching TV when Lo uh, Louis Farrakhan said, Either all of you will be on course by Tuesday night or we're going to thank you and say goodbye. And I turned on my webcam and I made a video about a message to the African-American community. And I said, look, I want you guys to understand something. Scientology does not care about you at all. I was in it for 30 years. There were five black people in Scientology, period. And I can name them, you know, that was it. They would never, they were like, oh no, you know, they're too far away and blah, 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 whatever. They always had, they're, they're kind of racist actually. So, and they're very anti-gay also. They're, they're, you know, they've got their own creepy things. So, and Hubbard was that, he was both of those. So, uh, the whole nation of Islam. Oh yeah, so I made the video to the African-American community and you know, it's like I said, they only want people, bodies in the shop and money and connections. That's it. That's all they care about. And about a month later, this lady wrote a book on Scientology and the Nation of Islam. And she called me up and she said, you know, I want to let you know your your video has gone viral in the black community. And I said, really? Why? And she said, because you're the only one who made a video about it. Mm -hmm. But but it's it's like I still am shocked that they're still in it because it, in the beginning I thought okay I can see it because they were no we're we're not Scientologists we're Dianeticists that's what they were saying not Louis Farrakhan but the the Nation of Islam guys mm -hmm. and remember it's not all of the Nation of Islam by any means it's a, just a small 
group of maybe 100, 200 people that are with Louis Farrakhan. <clears throat> so then, originally it was just kind of like Dianetics, but now he's gone clear and is doing the OT levels, which I don't get because I believe they're religious. And Hubbard was against churches, against Jesus, against everything. God, you know, and those are things I think that Nation of Islam is for. So I don't know. I don't know how they're handling it. But they're not the guys that somebody tried to say that they were the That was who, one of the Nation of Islam beat up Chris. And I say absolutely not. They've never been violent. And I just don't think so, no. Um, you think they pick or like they like pay off like some homeless people or something to do it? Or that, or dress someone up like a homeless person. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris said that the person didn't even look like they were homeless. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It was probably a Sea Org member that was dressed up like a homeless probably, person. Probably Angel. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they, see, this is the other thing I, I realized after I got out. I had said in session to my auditor, I'll do whatever you want. You know, whatever you need, I'm there. I'll, you know, 100%. Same with my husband, right? So they knew she's our mark and they knew i was a pr so i could go out and talk to people and stuff like that so when they needed those phony accounts open they got my auditor which is like a counselor to ask me to do it see it wasn't they didn't ask osa because they knew i wouldn't do it if osa asked me if they said you need to do this i'd say oh yeah you know but but he was someone i really trusted and so i said well what are you going to do with these accounts and he said i'm not going to tell you because these guys are really evil and they'll put you in deposition for months, if not years. And you don't want that. And you could see with my memory, I was like, no, I don't want that. <clears throat> so that's the way it was. You know. Well, you want to tell your, like, the epilepsy story about how, like, because I don't know if everybody knows that, like, they can't have, like, medicine in there or anything or that they don't believe in that. Yeah, so. they're kind of anti-medicine. They, they can have some medicine, but, but I have epilepsy and I take medicine for it and I joined the Sea Org. And I'd been in for a few months and I ran out of my medicine. And so they said, okay, I went up to whoever was my senior and I said, you know, I have to get a refill of my medicine. So he sent me down to this 18 year old kid who was the MLO, the medical liaison officer. And I said, look, I, I have to get a refill for my medicine. And he, he said, you know, we're the top 10% of the planet. We don't take medicine. So we're gonna put you on Dianetics and vitamins and that'll handle it. And I was young and I was just in it. I was in the Truman Show and I was like, really? And he said, oh, definitely. You know, and he gave me all these examples of people that they'd handled this with it and that. And I was like, well, okay, I'll try. And I started trying to get off my medicine and having massive grand mal seizures. And I mean, they'd find me all around town and in Scientology always like, see, it's because you're not responsible enough. It was just awful. It was like a fucking nightmare. It really was. It was like awful. And luckily, my mom, even though we weren't close at the time, she stayed on it. And I always say to every mother, stay on it. Like, your mother's really great. And, and she, she's moderating the chat right she's now. She's moderating it right speak. now. You know, but that's the kind of thing that is so great and it's so important. And my mom, even though we weren't really close, she stayed on it, man. And she'd call, she called me one night and she said, okay, what are you doing tonight? And I said, I'm going out on a date. She said, okay, I'll call you tomorrow. So she called me the next day and she goes, how was your date? And I said, what date? And she said, okay, that's it. And her, her father was a doctor. And she said, Tori, I'm going to tell you something. These people are going to kill you. And they did kill another person who had epilepsy where they got them off all their medication and they're dead. So she said, either you're on your medication today and your doctor calls me today and says, you're on your medication, or I am going to personally fly tonight from Chicago to LA, and believe me on this, L. Ron Hubbard and the Church of Scientology will never forget your mother. And I knew my dad was on NBC broadcasting these football games, and they had all these media lines to everything. They, they knew all kinds of different, and I knew my mom, she wouldn't just come out and ball out you know, the the exec, the Sea Org and Scientology, she would go on TV and say, don't let your kids get in Scientology, which actually would have been great. But at the time, you know, being a Scientologist, I didn't, that wouldn't have been good for me. Mm -hmm. But I was happy to get back on my medicine because who wants to have a grand mal seizure? 
but I've fought them for 30 years. And to this day, a couple of people will call me going, you should really get off your medication, Tori. And this one guy called me Mike. And I said, Mike, I'm going to tell you something. Don't say that to me again. And he said, he talked to me a little bit and he said, you should really get off your medication. And I said, okay, that's the second time. If you say it one more time to me, I'm going to block you. I'm going to ban you. And every time I talk about this subject, I'm going to mention your name and what you just did. And that's what happened. Oh, and the only reason I'm not saying his last name is because I can't remember. <laughs> uh, I just had a question. I don't know where it went. It was a good one. Um, well, take a, take a minute. Take so a anyway, minute. I'm happy I'm out. I'm happy I'm free. I, w I, I have quite a few friends that are still in and many who are dead. That's the other thing. In Scientology, people die like flies. It, it's just unbelievable the amount of people that I know. My brother, my other brother helped me wake up on that because he said, Tori, Every time I talk to you, another one of your best friends is dead. You and I are one year apart, and I know one person who's dead. And you know a cast of thousands. And I do. I mean, it just, it's unbelievable how many people you'll hear, oh, yeah, so-and-so, they're dead. And now, whenever I hear a name, I go, are they alive or dead? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's awful. Because especially, they often get cancer, and they won't take medicine for it. They won't do mm. medical treatment for it. I think Mike is, but you know now so, people that are out will, but people that are in, they just don't. They, they they used to go down to Mexico and get these injections, and they'd all die. How did wait? You said you know, or you knew John Travolta or something? I helped train John Travolta back right before he got Welcome Back, Cotter. He was on a course, and they asked me to help work with them, and I did. And he's a great guy. And even after being out, I ran into him at a, at um, I ran into him out at the Aero Theater, and he gave me a big hug. It was really nice. Oh, you think Osa was watching the stream? <laughs> someone, this stream? Someone has that. <laughs> I do. I think they're watching there everything you, you do. There you go. Yeah. Hi, Osa. Yeah, hi, um, Osa. <laughs> Way to go, Osa. It's been, a, to quote Anonymous, it's an epic fail. Love that. <laughs> they used to say that all the time. Epic fail. And it is. I mean, they, they have failed monumentally. And we have tried to tell them, you could do this and this and this, and it would be better. And they will not do it. Do you think that the current Scientology model is more sustainable than it is when you were in there? Oh, Jesus Christ, no. I was going to say no. No, hell no. Back when I was in, they had missions and people, just regular people, you could say, come on over, we're going to talk about it. And then, you know, they would do worse. a couple of courses and then you'd get them over to the org. And, you know, it was friendlier and more fun. And like I said, a lot of people had a good time back then. And now forget it. Uh, they don't even have missions anymore. They Miscavige wiped out all the missions. Asho, which you've been you've picketed in front of American Saint Hill. Yes. That that used to their big course was the American Saint Hill, the the Saint Hill briefing course. That's gone. They Miscavige wiped it out. Mm. That was one of their big money makers. Were you ever in the gold base? No. Area? No. Gold base is Sea Org. Gotcha. And I remember they routed me out oh, after that? six okay. months. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think Tom Cruise would ever leave Scientology? I don't. And what level would he be? Eight? I think he's probably five? seven. Seven? Maybe eight. But, you know, it, all of those levels are just bullshit anyway, so it doesn't matter. You know, it, it's, it's sort of like you think, well, ooh, he's OT8, he must be something. No, they're actually, as you go up this triangle, your, free win, your freedoms get cut more and more and more and you're more enclosed like he probably sees david miscavige and a couple other people and then they send him out to the movies and then he comes back and sees david miscavige and a couple other people that's my guess um and tom you're welcome to call me if i'm wrong i'd be happy to talk to you see you that's go. the difference i can talk to anybody that's in the church of scientology and i'm happy to do so they can't. They're not allowed. My only terminal is the IJC. They're not allowed to talk to me. This is my SP declare, declaring me suppressive, which is one of the most evil people on the planet, just so you know. Oh, so evil. <laughs>
Is there any way to get off the Scientology mailing list? Yes, I did it. And here's what I did. I, they were sending four magazines to this house because it was me, my husband, and my mother-in-law was here for something. And so they started sending her stuff and my son. And so I started writing up, it was a false statistic because that's a big button for them. And oh, so you know it is if, if it, that's happening. So I packed up all these magazines and sent them to them. I, first I wrote them and said, this is a false statistic. You're sending four magazines, we only need one. And they said, okay, send us the magazine. So I sent it to them and that was it. They took us off the mailing list. No, not, that wasn't it. They took us off the mailing list for the magazines. They kept sending me these little letters saying, Hi, Tori, when are you going to come back to court? They do right? handwritten letters, too. Handwritten right? letters. Yeah, so I, I did a picket where I opened, It was I could tell it was a Scientology thing because it was from the Church of Scientology. So I did a picket where I opened it up online on the video. And then I read and showed, this is, the, this is what I'm getting. Hmm. And that was the last one I got. Dang. Someone said, I don't know anything about this, but is there a connection between the British royal family and Scientology? No. No. There we go. Not that I know of. I mean, I, I'm not connected to the British family. Yeah. But I, I think we would kind of hear that one if we knew it, if it was true. Yeah. Um, and why do you care? <laughs> <laughs> what do they do with people that die? Bury them, I'm assuming. No, no? death, is, that's a good question, actually, because death is awful in the Church of Scientology. People die all the time, like I just said, and you never hear it. And this one guy would, um, Steve Miller, would come running out and he would go, Tori, Tori, come here, you're not going to believe who died now. And this was in the 80s, at the end of the 80s. And I'd say, who died now? And he'd start listing out all these people. And I'd say, you're kidding and, he, and they never have funerals. The only funerals they have are if you're what they call an opinion leader, which is someone very well thought of and everybody knows, then they have to have a funeral because so many people know them. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people, whoosh, underneath the rug. Jeez. And um, they don't really believe you're dying. Yes. So they're like, eh, drop your body. You can come back next lifetime. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah, I, I know, that. I now, when I left, I knew four kids personally who had killed themselves. And now I know 17. Hmm. Um, how deep do you think our government is involved in Scientology? I have no idea. Yeah. I. Uh, this isn't really a talk on the government. <laughs> um. But the suicide thing, I just want to clarify. The reason I think these guys kill themselves is because you're never allowed to do another practice. So they can't go to a therapist and say, I'm really unhappy in Scientology, but I can't leave. They can't do that. They can't talk to anyone. You can't. So how do you get, how do you... I think for younger kids, they're like, you know, in video games, there's a lot of suicide in video games. So I think they probably figure, yeah, all right, I'll just, I'll take myself out. And then I'll be right back. Don't do that. It doesn't work. Um, I hope I'm answering no, the question. No, no, you are. I am? Yes. Um, who, do you, who would take over Scientology after David Miscavige? I don't think anybody would. I really don't. I don't know. I haven't been in it in 23 years, so I don't really know. Yeah. But I, if if they did, they can have it. You know, it's yeah. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> uh, do you believe that the children in Scientology are abused? I well, obviously, many, 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 many personal stories have come out of children who have been abused. So I'm never going to say no. You know, it's like. Now, supposedly, they're not allowing children in Scientology, so at least to be born in Scientology, you know, like the Sea Org, they can't have children. So I think, I don't know. I don't know what's happening now. I've been out for 23 years, so I don't think so, but I don't know. And I think by the nature of being part of Scientology, you're being abused. Do you see what I mean? It's just like the, the, in the nature of a cult. And you could say, well, you're stupid enough to stay. And it's like, okay, fair enough. It, you know, it, I don't, it isn't stupidity. 
as the academics who came to interview me when I first started this, I said these academics came to interview me, and they said that one of the biggest misunderstandings of people in cults is that they're stupid. And he said, nothing could be higher, farther from the truth. Because most people who are in cults have very high IQ. That's why they got in the cult. They were looking for something more. And that's what happened to me. I was in college and I read Dianetics and I thought, oh, I could clear people. And my grandfather was a doctor and I knew how much schooling it takes and then graduate and internships. And I thought, oh, shit, I'm never going to make it through all this schooling. I can go be an auditor. And that, that's how I got in Scientology. I didn't want to go clear. I didn't want to go to, I didn't care about any of that shit. I just wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. And I figured as an auditor, you could help other people. Didn't really work out that way. Didn't really. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we got, well, what was the most challenging thing you had to overcome after getting out of Scientology? Them. That, yeah. You know, it was like fair game. And and I will say this, I want to clarify fair game because I keep hearing people saying, you know, we're fair gaming you. And I'm like, you guys aren't fair gaming them. I don't think. I mean, here here's the definition of fair game. You can lie, cheat, steal, destroy someone utterly. So maybe Will is thinking of destroy someone utterly. So you mean like when Will yells like this, this is, is fair, fair game? game? I think he just means it like if in reverse, this yeah, is fair game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, but yeah. I just wanted to make it clear that's that's the definition. Lie, which most people don't we, cheat. I think he just likes using their terms back on him. Yeah, well, no, we I all like do. We all I do. like that, and I really yeah. like Will. I'm so happy. He's, I know he's the best. He's really a great guy too. All you guys are. I'm re I'm really happy I got to know you. Um, and we're best friends now. Besties. No, She's my, she's my mom. I'm her second mom. Her mom's like, no way. <laughs> no, my I mom really loves you. Mom. I know, my she's mom really great. Um, yeah. they, they want you to post more videos of your own. I know, I've got to do that. I, I, I have to, te I, my, the reason I stopped is because technically I'm so far off. I mean, my, if you watch my old videos, it's just me in my bedroom. That's it. I, I made it. Yeah, but you have so many stories. Like it, I know I like, do. Yeah. yeah. So I, I guess I could. It's just, I don't know how to do all those, you know, like, like you do, like where you show the picture of Willa, you know, sweeping and stuff like that and putting arrows and all that. And, and so I told um, Jess that I, to start with, I just want to learn how to interview other people as a start. Like live stream type interview? I don't know. I don't know what, it, you know. Like live, like how like they could see us talking in real time? Or you mean like just like putting a video together and then uploading it? I think live stream. I like a live stream. Okay. Don't you think? Yeah. So I've never actually done it with like. The other to, way. Yeah. With like, I've never done it with like having somebody else in the live stream at the same time. So I actually don't know how to do that. But, but, so they're always with you, the people that you're interviewing? Oh, because that's right. It's always you. Yeah. But you know how to put those. I like know how to Willa, edit. You know how to edit. Yeah, I know how to edit. I just don't. I've never done like a live stream with like another person. Like, you know, not in the same you room as me. Well. You told me you'd teach me that. No. No, everything else I got. <laughs> I got you on everything else. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, okay. But live stream would be me talking, and then I just have to figure out how to do live stream because you do that on YouTube, right? Yes. But how do you do that? That's super easy. I'll show you that in two seconds right after. Okay. Yeah, that's super simple. Um, I'm old school. Why do Scientologists have to wear those ridiculous outfits? <laughs> the the people. Thank you. Thank you. You couldn't say it better. I, I have no idea. I mean, I do. Hubbard wanted to look like a Navy. That's what I think. And, you know, he called it the C organization, and that's why. Yeah. No, guys, I mean guess. Guess, like, the, like, she means, like, adding in another guess. They're saying that uh, Lara FM can show you because she does that all the time. Oh, okay. Okay. Is she here in L.A.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the one whose dad is still in Scientology that always wears yellow. She always wears yellow. She always has the proud SP sign. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um... By the way, you can decide you're done whenever you want. 
<laughs> well, it's up to you. It's up to you. You're the one answering all these questions. Well, do they have more questions? <laughs> they do? <laughs> They're going crazy. <laughs> I mean, you have 1,400 people watching right now, so. Um, okay. Go to Tori Magoo 44 and, and subscribe. I really, the only reason I care about that is because Scientology hates my statistics going up. And the last time I said that, it went from nine, nine what was it, to, to 20,000. It was 19,000, it went to 20,000. Okay, what's your YouTube? It's T-O-R-Y-M-A-G-O-O 44. Okay, and you're at how many subscribers? 20,000.2. She better be at at least 21,000 after this live is over. <laughs> Everybody better go subscribe to her. Um, okay. How do they make, how does Scientology make most of their money? Like from, like... Well, they used to, you know, they used to have the bridge to total freedom. And we all were on it, paying for it, right? So that was that. Then Miscavige started the IAS, the International Association of Scientologists. And in order to say you're a Scientologist now, you have to be an IAS member. And that is where they make a lot of their money. Because these people donate... You can watch Tony Ortega, you know, the underground bunker, yeah. and he makes posts about it, how many people donate. Like, I think the last time I read it, it was like some guy gave $50 million to the IAS. I mean, it's just, I think it's a tax scam where they can, you know, hide their money in the IAS. But to anybody listening to this, if you have a lot of money, please find a real charity and donate to that. Because Scientology is doing nothing with it. They're helping no one. Narconon is a complete and utter failure, which is one of their front groups. Applied Scholastics, a complete and utter failure. Way to Happiness, a complete and utter failure. The Church of Scientology, a total mind control, soul sucking, fraudulent business pretending to be a religion. Okay, so get it together and donate to someone that really has real things that they do. Um, someone had, okay, do, so the acting classes that are at the, you know, Celebrity Center, what do you think about those? Do you think it's there's totally, any actual acting going? No, like, no, no, again, it's just total hokey bullshit. You know, what, what's her name? Nancy Cartwright. I met her. Okay. And, you know, she's the one who does a lot of the seminars saying, come on in here, I'll teach you how to get into Hollywood. Well, my, my, one of my roommates stayed with me and within a year, he went from being in acting school to he's with, um, you know, the top guy in the black community. What's his name? You know, he has a big compound down in the south. I just forgot his name, but anyway. Someone's going to know it. He's really cool. And anyway, Josh ended up with him and doing that. You know, but Scientology, no, not really. I mean, John Travolta made it big, but John Travolta was already a good actor. And I think Tom Cruise, when he started, was a good actor. I like his old movies. I do. I like some of the old, old ones. Mm -hmm. But um, A Few Good Men, stuff like that. I like those movies. But his newer ones, not my thing. Yeah. But but I think those people came with their own skills. You know They're what I mean? Saying, like, I asked, Perry? listen to this. Because they used to send me out to handle the critics, right? Which is all of you guys. Mm -hmm. And I would go out and they'd leave. And so I was really successful at it, right? And so now I, I wake up and I leave Scientology and I escape out and that's on Tori Magoo 44. I made a 10 part series after being out for 10 years because so many people ask me the same questions. I made this long series on how did I get in? How, what helped me wake up? How did I escape out, right? And now I forgot where I was again. The 10 part series on but that's what I was telling you. But there was some reason that I said it. Come on, you guys. What was it? Somebody posted here. Last thing, uh, Tyler Perry was last thing we were on. Is that who you were talking about? Tyler oh, Perry. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah, and he, he's working with Tyler Perry. And this is, you know, just being with me. But they have very few statistics of it. They, but they did have a lot of, originally, that was another big draw, was Celebrity Center was a really nifty place back in the old day with Yvonne who ended up passing away, and it turned into a whole different thing. But they had great musicians and, and actors and different things. They, a lot of them have left or died. 
There's still some, but not many. No, wait. Tyler Perry wasn't a Scientologist, right? No. No, guys, he wasn't a Scientologist. No, no. <laughs> that was no, no. No, I'm sorry. I was just saying in comparison, <laughs> yeah. she says come to Celebrity Center and they'll get you up the bridge. I'm here in Burbank, just a person, and this guy came and stayed at my house. It's his, he's a successful actor with Tyler Perry because of him, not because of me. You know, it was like he, he worked out three hours a day, every day, and COVID hit. And, he, and while he was doing that at the gym, he met Tyler Perry's best friend. And the guy said, Tyler wants to meet you. And so then the COVID hit. So he just set up my house <clears throat> like a gym. And he would work out three hours a day. I would leave and go do errands and stuff and come back. And he'd be there working out. Jesus. But he's really fit and he's really handsome. And anyway, he he's part of Tyler Perry now. Part of his, his stuff. Um, okay. So, okay. This one, actually, I'm curious on, too. So, what do... There are parties, like the one that they had at the Shrine in... Uh, what is it? The Shrine at USC. They had a party. We all went oh, outside of there. Okay. Yeah, we all went outside of there. They're, like, New Year's party. Um, and they all dressed, like, very weird. Like, they were all wearing, like, their little recruiter outfits, it looked like. And all the, like, recruiters from the Hollywood building, they actually, like, didn't even make it to go inside. They all had to stand outside. Like, what do they, yeah, none of them were inside the party. They all stood outside guarding a gate. But, like, what what do they do at those parties? Any idea? Like, they, is it an actual party? Or no, it's like... it isn't a party. They have these huge events. They're not huge anymore because none of us could stand going anymore. But they, mostly staff go now because they don't have a lot of public that will go to those meetings. And I know because we used to go down there and pick it down there all the time. And so we'd recognize people and they were all staff, you know, dressed in you know, they kind of dress them up in these, like, what they think are real outfits, like what public would wear, but they look weird. They did. They did. <laughs> it's like... Um... Uh, you want to pick out a couple more to answer, and then you could call it whenever okay. you want, because okay. <laughs> okay. A lot, there's a lot of repeated questions, honestly, from people joining late, but... Okay, so these guys are are protesting right now outside the blue building? Evidently. <laughs> huh? Evidently in the okay. downpour, I don't know. Well, we'll have to see there that one. Anyway, um, no, that's not Jesus, Mom. That's Tori McCoy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question. If there was a congr oh, God, don't get it, a congressional hearing. No. Um, big goofy smile, tiny drama, not believable. What does that mean? <laughs> big goofy smile. Uh, we always have some trolls in there. I don't know what that means. Okay. Uh, randomly, you'll see something like, you're an idiot. Like, you know, they, they just put their stuff in there. And I'm pretty sure it's oh such. Yeah. Like, oh, Ask oh. about flag. Flag is here. Ask about flag is here. Oh, the song that they play now. Oh, on top of flag. <laughs> it's just so, that, that whole thing is so weird. Please ask her about OT8 and touch assist healing. Okay, OT8 is just more bullshit. It's OT3 extended. That's all it is. It's nothing. And it doesn't work. So that's all I'm going to say about it. And everyone that I know, they, they have a thing called correction, where if you're screwed up, you go to cramming, and that person helps fix you. That person for OT8 left and called me. And I said, what got you to leave? No, you could keep it. I was just... I got. I said, so "What, what got you to leave?" And she said, um, "Tori, there were so many OT8s who were either sick, committed suicide, or dead, that I just couldn't stay. I couldn't keep doing it." And I understand that. That was kind of like me with all these kids committing suicide. It was awful. Okay, so was that? Did I answer that question? Yes. That OT8. Oh, and touch assist oh, healing oh. is touch assist is just like this is the. The assist, feel my finger, feel thank you, hell. feel my finger, feel my finger. It's not bad. It's just, it's, I mean, Karen Black, I will say this, Yvonne Jens, who ran Celebrity Center, said, Tori, Karen Black has lost her voice, and she has to get it back by tomorrow. So you go to her house and do a touch assist. So I go, okay. So I go there, and I'm going like this. And it's supposed to be like, feel my finger, feel my finger, feel my finger, feel my finger. You know, it's like 10, 20 minutes, right? With her, it'd be like, feel my finger, and 20 minutes later, she'd go, okay. And I thought, okay, 
what the fuck is that? <laughs> so I go feel my finger, 20 minutes later, okay. You know, I just kept doing it. I thought, all right, she seems like she knows what she's doing. Yeah. I mean, it was very unusual. She got her voice back. And the next day, she was on Nashville. That was her big movie. And that, to so everywhere for years, we'd run into people and they'd go, I'd run into her and they'd go, she'd go, Tori, Tori, come over here. You got to meet this girl. She gave me this touch assist. That's how I got Nashville. You know, because she couldn't talk. She had no voice. So anyway, it was just kind of a fun, sometimes it works, but it's it's iffy. Uh, I mean, it's, it's up to you. You want to end it? Maybe pick pick one more question that you think is good. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard when they're moving. Well, if you see something that you like want to stop at, you could just like put your finger on it and it'll it's stop. It's the worst thing you've witnessed in Scientology, me having grand mal seizures. That's the worst. But you wouldn't think so. But um, other things that they've witnessed, um, I don't know. It, it, I'm not going to go with that because there's... there's Plenty of things that they've done wrong, and there's some things that they've done right. Um, what is the hole? It's a place that they lock. Miscavige set it up where they lock people in. It's like the RPF for the Sea Org, which, remember, that's not the public. And if they fuck up enough, they lock them in this room, and it's awful. You can Google it. Do you think that's where it. Sebastian is? I don't know. I have no idea. Here's my touch assist finger. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Becky Sam. All right. Um, no new high quality member, not that I know of, but I've been out for 23 years, so I'm a bad person to ask, and I'm sure they'll tell you, oh, definitely. No. <clears throat> and what did you think when you first read Zeno? I already answered that, so yeah. you can listen to yeah, it earlier. Yeah, restart if you join it'll late. be there. Yeah, uh, this guy said the same thing, no new high quality, is that an OSA person or what? It's they like the they may time. sometimes they just figure that we won't see the thing. So oh, so they ask it, it again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, chat's going fast tonight, hurting my eyeballs. Well then, get off. Yeah, read this one because it's pinned. Was well, Christmas for marketing or do some still actually? Okay, yeah. Why do they have that whole Christmas display if it's not a recognized holiday? PR. There you go. That's it. They don't believe. Hubbard didn't believe in God. He didn't believe in Jesus. He didn't believe in churches. Yeah, and they so, also always say God bless. On purpose, I feel right. like, yeah, God bless. So that's why I just say Zenu bless back because I'm like that. <laughs> <laughs> Zenu bless back. But tell everyone what's your uh, your YouTube again so everybody can follow you. It's Tori T O R Y, M A G O O, forty four. Tori McGee forty four. Let me see how many subscribers you have now. What were you at? Twenty two point two. All right, we're at twenty point five. It's got to get to like at least Come 21. Come on, you guys. More can do that. Be, right, guys. Be, be kind. It just takes you a minute. You they, have to go. They will to... after the sense. Huh? They will after the sense. Okay. But the reason I have that name, person. which is really weird, is because when I woke up, you can't really talk to anybody. And my dad, I gave him the nickname Mr. Magoo because he was on TV broadcasting football games. And he was funny, and he had little tiny eyes. Like you can see, I have kind of little eyes. So I called him Mr. Magoo. So now I wake up, and his football number was 44. <clears throat> and he has football cards and stuff like that, so in, with the foot 44. So I made my YouTube site, which was in 2008. Anonymous gave me that webcam. And, said, and I said to Bunker, what am I going to do with a YouTube site? And he said, well, we're going to make a video. Tori Magoo has a YouTube site. <laughs> there you go. So anyway, that's why I have that name. And it's kind of dorky. And But I have 20-something 20, 20 th thousand followers. So it's too tricky to change it at this point. I guess I could start a new one, but I don't think so. No, don't start a new one. Yeah. You already got the subscribers on there. That's right. Yeah. All right, you guys. Yeah, I well, I love it. you. Thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you for helping support Jess and... The Chris's and Streets LA. Yes. You guys are doing a great job. Everyone and is She's going to come out sometimes when we're out there, right? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right, guys, go subscribe to her channel. <laughs>